of nonprofits team up to help some of New Orleans homeless with a different approach. They're attacking the problem on a smaller scale, as John Snell explains. I had a tent over on the other side of the Superdome over here. Pam Smith came to New Orleans 10 years ago in search of work. She wound up on the streets. Life there means lacking something as simple as the security of a locked door. Even living in a tent, you don't have anything but a piece of nylon between you and uh, whatever happens, and it's, it gets real scary. Like so many others, Pam seemed out of options, out of resources, out of hope. She was far from alone, and that's where Luann White comes in. Home sweet home, tell me about it. So this is an um, accessible unit. She and Jervis Reed set out to tackle the issue of homelessness in New Orleans. They founded Luvis Services with the mission of building tiny houses for the homeless. It's a bedroom with a closet and then an accessible bathroom. Complete with appliances, a small living area, heat and air conditioning. Two new occupants moved into the first unit in the Ninth Ward a few months ago. It's small, but it's, it's not super tiny, if you will. There's some space here. Yeah, it's comfortable. We tried to come up with a design that was comfortable for someone who is in a wheelchair. Lubis caught the attention of Donna Paramore, who runs the Traveler's Aid Society of Greater New Orleans. They agreed on a partnership. Some place that is respectful, that, you know, can allow them to have their dignity again, something that can allow them to hope again. So I thought it was wonderful and exactly what we needed, especially with the scarcity of affordable housing in New Orleans. I know, I know. It was Traveler's Aid that helped Pam Smith into an apartment in New Orleans East when caseworker Angela Ozarek told Pam she would get her off the streets. Really, she saved my life. Ozarek helped Pam fill out applications for assistance and get health care for severe back pain and breathing problems. Maybe 10 to 15 seconds of walking before yeah. you had to stop and you yeah. couldn't breathe anymore. So it was really concerning to me that Pam might have like a major heart event or something like that. Federal money pays for Traveler's Permanent Supportive Housing Program which serves up to 155 households. To qualify, someone must be chronically homeless, on the streets for over a year, and with a disability. We almost never encounter anyone who doesn't want housing. It's more what you said about like losing the ability to keep track of time, like losing the ability to try. Angela's an angel or something. She, she uh, you know, she, she really helped me. She helped me a whole lot. Pam lives in traditional housing, but the concept of tiny houses has caught on in other communities, such as Portland and Seattle. They've drawn some critics who question the value of cramming large numbers of people into small areas. Supporters see them as a way of bringing people inside quickly. I really am proud. In the Ninth Ward, Lubis initially planned to install modified shipping containers. So what reaction did you get uh, to shipping containers? Uh, we got a... Uh, it was not a favorable reaction for shipping containers in this community. After howls of protest from neighbors, they settled on this tiny house duplex. Two units, each about 500 square feet, adorned with screen porches. Architects donated their services. The feedback that we got from the community is that we need something that fits into the community. And it's like, oh, well, we can, we can do that. The two organizations plan to work together on four more tiny houses in the Lower Nine before possibly moving on to other neighborhoods. When the scale of the problem at times seems insurmountable, how much difference can they make? It doesn't put an uh, immediate dent, but you'll see a, a dent long term. So you have to look at like a problem like homelessness didn't start in one day, and it's certainly not going to end in one day. For somebody who is trying to get back on their feet, what does it mean to have this as a kind of, you know, a, a base, if you will, of operations? It means they can address their own needs. They can make their own choices. They don't need someone else telling them when they have to get up and get out. And just maybe they'll put a dent in the problem, one tiny unit at a time. John Snell, Fox 8 Local First.